Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCORE Fairfield County's live webinar on 2021 Small Business Tech Recap. I'm Bob Hogan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County. I'm going to be your host today, and our presenter is Bud Froing. More on Bud in just a minute, but first, some brief information on SCORE. SCORE is a nonprofit national partner of the SBA and locally here at SCORE Fairfield County. We have about 100 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. And we offer three primary value added services to small business owners. First of all, we offer free one on one counseling, and you can access that by um, using the yellow bit.ly link on the screen, or you can go to our website and click on the request a mentor button. And we can do that in person by video, by phone, or um, by, um, by email. Uh, secondly, we offer a wide range of educational programs like the one today, roughly about 100 throughout the year. And uh, lastly, we offer extensive resources on our website. Our next webinar uh, will be next Tuesday, December the 7th at noon. And the topic is how 99% of data breaches could have been prevented with Scott Gombar presenting. You can find more specifics on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. And if you're on our website, we also have a large number of archived webinars on a wide range of business topics that you can be, uh, view on demand at your leisure. Just some uh, brief logistics about today's event. We have set aside time for Q&A at the end of the presentation and Bud will take questions at the end. If you have a question, you can submit it at any time using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And um, we will uh, take as many as we can up until the top of the hour. This uh, webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be available on our website within the next day or so. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Bud Freund. Bud has been self-employed for 40 years and he's been providing IT solutions to homes and small businesses for the past 20 years. He currently teaches technology life skills at King School and as a certified SCORE mentor, he regularly presents technology webinars and workshops throughout Fairfield County. I'll now turn it over to Bud. Bud, it's all yours. Thank you, Bob. Just remembered to unmute myself. Technology is a challenge sometimes. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to cover, and these are the items that I'm going to hit during the course of this next hour. Um, before we dive in too deeply, though, if my machine will cooperate, uh, I, it's very important you understand. I try to make this stuff understandable. So if you've got a question, please send it to us. Uh, what I've found to be the case is in ma many experiences are that you'll have a question and the next slide will be the answer, but don't let that stop you. Ask away, please. Also, before we get too far, many people get very confused by some of this computer language that we use sometimes, particularly when we talk about, and I hate the phrase, cybersecurity. So just to clarify things, that is an A-10 Warthog. It is a very serious attack plane in the US Air Force. And that, as we all know, is a threat actor. Now that we've gotten those out of the way, I wanna just ask you to sit and think for a moment about how you would keep a business running if your machines stopped working. How would you do these four items? Because um, whether it's a tablet or your phone or an old computer that you can take out of mothballs, this is how to keep your, your business running. And as we know, computers are, basically what run our businesses today. And also understand that once you figure that out, you will have a leg up on a multinational corporation that had absolutely no idea of what to do when they were shut down by North Korea. And we're going to talk about uh, that particular instance and cyber insurance as well. Now, I want you to think about all these devices we've got as the everything thing, because it, it really is everything that we do these days. It's billing, banking, investing, research, recreation, education, shopping, shopping, and of course, inexplicably, 
binge watching cats on YouTube. So the proper care and feeding of these machines is something that will keep them going for a very long time. So the first thing I want you to consider are these things Bob mentioned earlier called a bitly. I don't know any human being who can tell me where that white bitly is gonna take them. However, I can give you two tips on that. The first one is that if you type out a bitly in your web browser and you add a plus sign to that bitly, Bitly, in its infinite wisdom, will tell you where the link will take you before taking you there. Also, you can use this website, checkshorturl.com, to type in your Bitly and also find out before it takes you there. I'm going to talk about click first, regret later many times along the way. It's that, that human nature thing that sometimes, unfortunately, can get us into trouble. The other item which we've come to know as we sit outside at restaurants are QR codes. And again, I don't know any human being who can read this and tell me where it's going to take them. So again, Proceed cautiously with these things before you just go diving in. Now, if you see that symbol on your dashboard of your car and you do nothing, are you planning to let your passenger push the car while you steer or is your passenger going to steer while you push the car? Because my crystal ball predicts that if you do nothing, you are going to have a problem. Similarly, when you see those red circles, it is time to do something on the device that is telling you that it's time to do something. There are 80,000 doors into and out of a computer. Door 3389 is remote access. Door 9600 is your printer. And I believe door 443 is Zoom. Every device has 80,000 doors, and these updates plug up the holes. Let me put it differently. Once upon a time, cars didn't have bumpers. Then they got seatbelts, and then they got airbags, all of which were to make the driving experience better and safer. With that in mind, I urge you to find a sweet spot somewhere between doing absolutely nothing and total paranoia when it comes to technology, because it's really important to do your updates and your upgrades because it does plug up the holes. So a quick thing on passwords, because again, if you lock the door of your car when you park it in a garage or you lock your house before you leave, all passwords do is to lock the information that you've got. And I am a very big fan of what's called the elite language. It's short for elite. It is the transposing of numbers and symbols for letters. And as long as you don't get too carried away and forget that cap H and anti-disestablishmentarianism, it's pretty simple to use. A mnemonic you may want to consider at the bottom there, a person, a place, and a thing. If you make it into the leet language, you've got a pretty bulletproof password. However, it's really important that you do not put the password where everybody can see it. I am a very big fan of what can be considered hiding in plain sight. In other words, create a, a Word document or a spreadsheet that's called birthdays and anniversaries or guest list or shopping list or anything but this is the file where I keep all my secret passwords. That is a really bad name for a file. So. Other than that, what else have we got here? Oh, this is another thing that's important to understand. 
Sun Tzu was alive 500 years before Christ was born, and he wrote a book called The Art of War. Now, I'm not sure that the current modern translation includes that part at the bottom, but I think you get the general idea. Also, we're all living in this environment where, and I've got one of these things behind the computer I'm using, so I'm not going to say it or you will hear it wake up, but they are listening. Lawyers are being warned that they're listening. Conversations are being recorded. So it is very important to de delete these things on a regular ongoing basis. As we've learned over the past year, especially with Zoom meetings and all, we are a community that's online. And that online community has both created problems and solutions. The value of that community online? Well, we learned that this year from Frances Haugen, who, by the way, was using her phone to photograph her screens while working remotely. And take a look at this, folks. In 2013, Facebook thought that their user was worth $19 an hour. And in 2020, that user is worth $164 per year. This is a stag. And when you look at the number of people online, these are staggering numbers. It's a, a simple explanation of why they try very hard to perpetuate what they're doing, whether it's for the good or it is not so good as we have come to learn. So let's talk about some of the technologies in the world other than Francis Haugen. However, again, understand that we have done this incredibly massive change really quickly. Imagine that room being able to fit on that little gizmo and being able to be organized and found, depending upon how good you are at databasing or naming your files. But this, this is where we're evolving to. Also, before I forget, understand that credit unions um, are a really good place to make your life difficult. I, I do recommend you make your life somewhat difficult because people take your information and they will use it to their benefit and not yours. But also understand all of these credit unions have been hacked. So again, we'll, we proceed cautiously. Oh, few more big picture items. Um, first item, I'm just gonna walk down this punch list. Um, you can turn off the Facebook tracking by third party people by going to that website. And when you turn that off, the Nikes won't follow you all over the internet. If you have a Gmail account and you go to myactivity.google.com, you can turn off the Google tracking as well as the YouTube tracking. YouTube is owned by Google. You can turn off what they're, whatever they're watching that might have been poking at you. Aboutads.info is basically a public service website where if you go to control, there's a tab at the top, go to the web choices tool, you can turn off the pop-up ads from 130 bona fide respected internet advertisers. All of them know, but the really good ones that are, are you know, viable, real bona fide entities, uh, you can shut a lot of that down. Also, on your phone, well, this, in this case, your iPhone, if you go into settings, you turn off the privacy and you turn off the tracking, Apple will not be following what you're doing. If you are using Venmo, the default, the, the, the I got Venmo, Venmo, I turn it on. The setting for Venmo is to let the whole world know who you gave $3 to, to reimburse for lunch or a cup of coffee or whatever it is. 
if you go into the gear that's, uh, there's a face, then you go into the gear and you can turn off the, uh, the public and turn it to private in Venmo, it, it's a far better thing than letting the world know who you're giving your money to. Also, I am not a very big advocate of what I describe as cross-pollinating. If you use your Google or your Apple or your Microsoft account in other things, all it does is allow people to follow what you're doing. And when we didn't know, it was one thing. It, now that you do know, you can make the choice as to whether you want it to happen or not. Next item. Uh, this was a slide used in another presentation, but if you get the Goldman Sachs card through Apple, you are able to purchase Apple products at the Apple store and get one year of interest-free payments. Client just needed a new machine and I'm going to be able to get them all set up so that on a monthly basis for one year, they will do their Apple payment. There will be no interest on it. It, it is a fabulous way to consider keeping your equipment new and up to date. And for those of you who are using Amazon and there are very few people on the planet Earth anymore who aren't using Amazon, that telephone number will get you to a human being. And that human being, all they want to do is make you happy. Let me put it differently. I got some picture frames and they arrived cracked. One of them arrived cracked. I called them and said, it's cracked. They said, oh, don't worry. We'll send you another one. Well, do you want that? Oh, no, don't you can keep those two. Don't worry about it. Let me put it a little differently. I don't care if it's picture frames, a television. There, there is virtually nothing that you as an individual are going to purchase through Amazon that will even come close to their annual rounding era. All they want you to do is call and order another thing. And that telephone number will get you to a person who will help you solve the problem. So what's been going on this year? We've been watching the cost of cars go up because we've been watching the cost of chips go up, because we've been watching boats that can't come in to unload, because we've had whatever COVID problems have been ensuing and have gone through the supply chain. So the, these are, are technology items that are, are affecting all of us. I was chatting with someone who uses a gaming computer for business because of the horsepower under the hood. And he was telling me that he could probably sell his video card for two or three times what he paid for his whole computer. However, it could be another six months or a year before he might be able to buy another video card. So again, this, this is all part of what's affecting us in our, our global economy and our businesses. Crypto has become something that has crept into the media. Um, I've talked with a number of financial people and, and many of them uh, not in agreement when I say, would you believe that crypto is based on air? There, there's no foundation to it. And they say, yeah, it's pretty much, there, there's, there's nothing that it's based on. So proceed cautiously. If you recall, the Ever Given was the, 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 uh, the shipping boat that got stuck in the Suez Canal. As we talked a few moments ago, supply chain has been a, a big deal. Also coming down the pike is Windows 11. And there are there is a Microsoft website that will allow you to check and see whether the computer that you own is capable of running Windows 11. 
Truth be told, the, the computer I am using right now does not have enough horsepower to run Windows 11. It's working perfectly fine, so I'm not quite sure what the, if you don't hit this benchmark, you can't have new software is about now, but my crystal ball, I would say that within the next two or three years, um, you're going to see the discontinuation of Windows 10 and you will be seeing um, machine, you'll be required to get Windows 11. Similar in concept to the fact that you needed a car with a catalytic converter and your car needed backup lights. Yes, once upon a time, Ford Mustangs did not have backup lights and you would get a ticket if you didn't have a backup light. So they'll, they'll move us farther into the world. On the Apple side of life, you're up to iOS 15, and by name, it's called Monterey. I can't keep track of the names. Numbers work for me. They're consecutive. The names, I, I always ask them to tell me what the number, because I can't follow it otherwise. Backup. There are two kinds of people in the world, those who back up and those who will. And I urge you, come up with some sort of backup, whether it's something you're doing on a daily basis and unplugging so it stands alone, or it's something that you do online, or it's iCloud, or it's Datto, or it's uh, Dropbox. Well, I don't consider Dropbox to be a backup until you are paying for it. As, as a paid service, you have a backup as a free service, Dropbox is online access. Chin diapers, we, we've got too many people who are perpetuating the, this COVID dilemma by not covering up carefully and we're just watching it all unfurl in front of us. Apple Wallet, you're, you're into a world of touchless and, and whether you, you use their Goldman Sachs card or you add your own card here in the state of Connecticut coming up very soon will be the ability to have your driver's license in your Apple wallet. It will be, uh, you won't need the card, you'll just have to remember to take your phone. We've talked about Frances Haugen she has provided revelations to the world. Another thing that's of novel or new as of very recently, uh, I've made this bit.ly because Google is now allowing you to file a complaint that says, I do not like this picture, this website, this blog, this whatever information, is being posted about me. Um, it, it's very similar to the, the European privacy laws, which are mandatory. In this case, you would need to provide a URL or a screenshot and send it to that URL link, bit.ly slash remove from Google. You remember the capital letters, it's a bit.ly, they're very important. On social media, I call it on social media. Other people call it social media, but it, it's become an incredibly ugly world now. So in, in the best interest of your business, proceed cautiously with the information that you put on there. So what's going on in your office that may be of value? A um, couple of, well, Oh, let's talk about pictures first, because pictures online, I read somewhere there's close to 1 trillion of them. That's a lot of pictures. It is an unmanageable number. And when we put too big a picture online, what happens is that somebody can see that the microphone and video camera for Mr. Zuckerberg's computer are taped over. Now, think about this for just a minute because 
Mr. Zuckerberg doesn't want you to do that with all of the stuff you put on Facebook or Instagram, but he doesn't want you to know what's going on with him. So again, just understand, smaller pictures going online will have less information to reveal. All right, a couple of pieces of software that I've found to be rather useful. First off is drafts. It's like a two or $3 item. If you are using a, uh, an Apple watch, you can dictate what you, are, what you need to get into an email or a text on your phone, it's it's that Dick Tracy thing. It, it really is. But you end up with an app that you can then take the text from your phone or take the text from your tablet, massage it as necessary and move it on. For those of us who are driving a lot and need to get information, it's a whole lot safer than texting and driving. Nebo. If you are going into the world of the electric pencil, electronic pencil, the Apple pencil, whatever you want to call it, Nebo allows you to create documents, create uh, notebooks. It will allow you to transpose from written text into ASCII text, you know, all the letters from your typewriter. Uh, if you use upper and lower case, it does a really clean job if your writing is fairly clean. Um, I write in capital letters because my chicken scrawl in lower case is unreadable. So everything that comes out of Mebo for me is all in capital letters. However, Microsoft Word has a case changer so that you can turn all of your document into upper and lower case writing. Good notes my daughter uses uh, for, for college and it allows not only um, searching words in her handwriting, but it allows her to free form because she does some graphic design work and all of that can get incorporated into a notebook. Nebo and GoodNotes, um, they're probably like $10 pieces of software. Um, they, they make paper go away. Um, one of the advantages is that um, it's always with you in an iPad and they both have readers that you could put onto your phone so that you would also be able to write on your tablet and still be able to get to it on, on your phone if you've done your syncing. Um, I just discovered Rocket Books recently from someone I know in a business group. And again, it, it's a worthwhile consideration if you are tactile and you like to write your notes by hand. If you use the um, Pentel Friction, F-R-I-X-O-N, ink, which is erasable ink. A rocket book is basically plastic paper. So you are able to write your notes on this plastic paper. There is the potential for smudging. However, when you're done using the rocket book app, you can take a picture of the page and you can upload it as a PDF that you can do whatever filing you want or email to yourself or put into um, Dropbox or OneDrive, wherever, however you'd like to use it. Um, I, I'm, I'm using a lot of vocabulary these days. And my reminder to talk about Dr. Jeff is because this was a fellow who was having some website challenges and, and having some email challenges and where three, four years ago, 50% of my conversation would have been explaining what is a PDF and what is a hot link and, and what is a URL. Uh, the, these are all words that have now crept into our vocabulary and become very common, giving a very clear indication that um, 
we're, we're no longer in the world of early adapters when it comes to technology. It is, it is mainstream stuff. Not only is it mainstream stuff, but it is very important to be safe in the mainstream stuff. And with that said, I strongly recommend that you use two-step authentication, multi-factor authentication, two-factor authentication, wh whatever you want to call it. It's that thing that when you go to your banking website and you put in your username and password, they send a code to you before you get through the door. And these two-step authentications are quite possibly the best safety valve that you can put in place for yourself and your valuables that are online, whether they are data, or money. I am also a huge fan of Microsoft 365. It used to be known as Office 365. They keep changing the names. Hopefully we all can keep up with them. Not sure why, but so it goes. Anyway, Microsoft 365, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and constantly updated by Microsoft to plug up all those holes. Additionally, they will give you one terabyte of storage online, and the cost is $100 per year for five licenses. That's you, your, uh, your partner, your secretary, your spouse, your children, five licenses, 100 bucks and everybody gets a terabyte of storage, which by the way, if my memory is correct, will hold approximately 640,000 Old Testament Bibles. Put differently, if you can fill a terabyte of storage, you are prolific. This was an article that Printed, a, printed over the weekend from the Wall Street Journal. It was written by an MIT professor. And the, the general concept is really interesting. Um, don't get fooled by the title. You, you still need somebody smart enough to figure out what's going on in, in a business environment. However, conceptually, what he's talking about is that the computers that are being used in manufacturing are different from the computers being used in HR or sales or marketing or fulfillment or logistics. And where all of these different departments would all have to talk to a single source to either explain, justify, rationalize, get new equipment, the premise here is IT has become so part of everyone's business and workflow that the manufacturing people should have IT people. The HR should have an IT person. And each of these department IT people should then be meeting with somebody who's kind of overseeing it, obviously, to explain and say, well, we need to get the XYZ 2000, it will cut our production time in half. And rather than having to go through a central source, it, it gets you leaner, meaner, and your business moving faster. I did mention cyber insurance and my father sold insurance. So I can tell you that insurance companies don't want to give you back the money that you give them. While you, you pay for claims to be paid, those contracts are really, really long for really, really specific reasons. Understand that if an insurance company can demonstrate that your ransomware hack, Sony, was an act of war as declared by government, 
you don't get reimbursed. Your insurance policy doesn't cover active wars. It may not cover the entire cost of ransomware payment. It may not guarantee the return of your, all your data, which is why it is very important for you to do your backups. And I am rather astonished that insurance companies do not include in cyber insurance the data backup component. And understand as well that if you file a claim and you can't demonstrate the practicing of policies and procedures to prevent ransomware attacks, you may not be reimbursed on your claim either. You know, it's that, that flood insurance. Well, if you didn't pay for flood insurance, they're not going to cover that flood in your basement. Email. We're all living in it and overwhelmed by it. So do please proceed with caution. For those of you who remember Sergeant Phil Esther House from Hill Street Blues, the message is the same. The situation is just a little different. Have I mentioned this yet? Because I think this is a really important concept. This is also something that's very important to understand. You're not going to be able to put hardware into place to protect all of the problems. The thing to put in place that becomes really important is education. The, the informing the people who work for you, the keeping yourself informed is going to be the best safety that you can do for the technology and the business that you have. So we all learned over this past year that if you're at work and your kids are at school and you don't have enough bandwidth, you might not be able to get everything moving smoothly. So if you are with Optimum, Old optimum is copper wire. You start at 100 megabits per second. At two, and if you add $10 increments, you can get up to 400 megabits per second. And I can tell you that with four people doing Zoom online, constant through COVID, I didn't have anybody yelling at me and I was very happy about that. It was a good thing. If you are moving into a new location, the only thing that Optimum is installing is fiber optic. And there are some new rules to that game, which I'm not going to be going through, but understand that fiber will bring the signal into your house faster but you are then going to need to address the moving that signal around inside of your house faster as well. Also, depending on the devices that you have inside your house and how rambunctious or not your children may be, your router is a really good place to provide behavior modification and network control. So there was a great story uh, mid-year last year about the student at school who was taking Zoom classes, slid the, the, the blockage over the, uh, the camera and renamed himself reconnecting and then basically put his feet up on the desk and it took about a half a year for the teacher to figure out that he just wasn't doing anything and and he had basically tried to put one over on everyone mad venture and centric and blockchain one of my accounts is a home inspection company they do their home inspections on an ipad the software is online the photographs are taken by the iPad. They're incorporated directly into the report. 
that is generating a PDF. There are um, the, the ability to take a, uh, a 360 degree photographic image of any given room in the process, the camera generates the mathematical computations to allow for you to make the schematic of your house, the architectural rendering, so that you've got all of your rooms and they're carefully labeled. However, Madventure, the software used to do this 360 degree image is good enough to be able to zoom into the documents that are sitting on your desk. In other words, if you have left your bank statement on your desk and you have signed a release for the home inspector to do this 360, you potentially, potentially could be providing information to whomever potential buyer can see that you're banking at JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Fidelity, wherever it may be. And oh, look at that, those are the numbers. Be careful with what you leave out before people are coming in to take information that will go online. Similarly, Centric, which is also part of this collection of software for the home inspection report. You take a photograph of the plate on the side of your oven or the side of your refrigerator, and it is going to tell you the make and model of your refrigerator, where to download the instruction manual, where you can get parts, the recall that you might have overlooked that now the potential buyer says, you didn't do the recall, I'm not paying you for that stove. Or if you've got a refrigerator that's got a, uh, a water filter in it and you aren't documenting the replacement of your water filters, you can end up with any collection of these various water travel diseases. And where is it all going? It's going into this thing called blockchain. And blockchain is, mar is your address married to the internet. In other words, Six West End is now a location where people can say, oh, you bought your refrigerator in 2012. Oh, your stove is 15 years old. Oh, I see you did some work in a closet and you got all of those shelves put in back in 2017. And all of this information about your specific location gets aggregated into the blockchain so that the report that is being generated to the potential home buyer has an incredibly comprehensive amount of information about your house. If you take good care of your house, that's really good news. If you don't take good care of your house, this could be a negotiating problem. I mentioned the Alexa and lawyers. This is probably being recorded by mine as well as Zoom. So again, bear it in mind. Um, I had a daughter at college who wanted Spotify. It was a holiday gift. I got a second daughter who wanted Spotify. It was a holiday gift. And then lo and behold, the Spotify family plan for five turns out to be cheaper than the cost of Spotify for two people. And I have found some really wonderful old music on Spotify that I didn't even know existed because my kids weren't hoarding it. I just didn't know that I could get Spotify for all of us. Last item, if you are using wireless in your house, a mesh network is 
basically overlapping bubbles. So you don't have to add range extenders and they work really well and they make the moving around your house with your mobile devices a pretty seamless thing. I mentioned earlier that education is a really important item. Frank Abagnale, who was the person that Catch Me If You Can was based upon, um, did his time in jail and then went to work for the FBI. And th this is a professional con man. And he, even he is telling people the most important safeguard that you can do for you, your business, your family, is to educate. This is an item that, oh my, what are we now? We're, we're close to uh, six years old on that. It, it, it hasn't changed. What can I answer for people? Okay, th thanks, bud. Um, we are gonna use the remaining time for uh, Q and A uh, and just if you have a if you have a question, um, you know, please use the Q and A box um, at the at the bottom of your screen, and um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a question or an area that Bud covered today. As he said, you, uh, feel free to uh, bring up anything that in the technology area in your business um, that uh, you could maybe benefit from uh, some insight from uh, from Bud. And I'm sure he'll do it. Or if you would, uh, he touched on a lot of different things. If you would like to, him to go back over uh, one or two areas that uh, he went quickly over, um, I'm sure he'd be glad to do that too. So um, why don't, uh, but we did have one question early on and it was um, when you were talking about um, bit.ly links and, and, and the question was from James, what exactly is, is a bit.ly? Maybe you could um, oh, just sure. go over that. Okay. Um... We, we've all seen the incredibly long URL that gets us to that, that page that we're looking for. What a bit.ly does is allow you to take that really, really long URL and crush it down to something very small and manageable that you can include in a presentation like this, or if you've got an email that you just want somebody to be able to see something short as a hot link rather than taking up a really long page. For instance, um, if you want to share a, uh, an Amazon link, we, we were looking for a bathrobe for a holiday gift, and the block of text can be really large. Well, if you take that really large block of text and you run it through Bitly, it becomes a, a one-liner so to speak. And that's what bit.ly's are really useful for. And many companies are doing them now. You can get bit.ly's through Google, the Washington Post, the New York Times. Um, I think Amazon does them as well. So uh, the only thing that's very important to remember is that once you've taken this incredibly long thing, which you may not know either, and you've made it down into a very small uh, number, letter, capitals, and smalls, um, you won't know where it's going to take you. So again, remember, with a bit.ly, if it's bit.ly and then whatever that, that extra piece is, add a plus sign to the very end. And when you hit enter, the people at bit.ly will tell you where you're going to be going to as opposed to just taking you there. Okay, very, very helpful. I think that, uh, that tip on the plus sign is uh, very, uh, very helpful from a security point of view. Um, maybe while we're waiting for uh, some questions to come in, but do you, do you um, have any, uh, this is kind of maybe looking at your crystal ball, do you have any thoughts on, um, you know, what, what we can see going forward, what we're going to see more of in the way of technology or where the developments um, are, are going to be and how that might impact small business. Um, well, if you're on the Apple side of life, th this M1 chip that, that is now their, their current offering is absolutely extraordinary. Um, you'll, you'll 
unquestionably see faster computing as, as things go on. Um, artificial intelligence. I, I'm not a very big fan of artificial intelligence. I, I consider it to be more truly artificial intelligence. They're, they're still working out bugs, particularly in the self-driving car. Um, I, I've watched self-driving cars not drive where they're supposed to go to. And the other aspect of self-driving cars that become a problem is that if you create the, the hypothetical scenario of child on bicycle, mother with stroller and automobile all coming into this intersection and none of them are paying attention to any of the others, how fast can the computer in the smart car that's supposed to be self-driving figure out what to do or what not to do. Do I hit the brakes? Do I hit the brakes hard? There's a car behind me. All of those value judgments that we as drivers do are, are now being handed off to computers. They're, um, that, that's, it, it, it's coming. I don't think it's here yet, but it's coming. Um, the good news we're starting to see uh, with Build Back Better, and the infrastructure uh, bill that hopefully will get passed as well, uh, you, you'll see in, in more rural areas, high-speed internet. Uh, those of us here in Fairfield County kind of scratch our heads and say, what do you mean they don't have high-speed internet? But there, there are places that don't. It's, um, it's still something that's getting rolled out. Once upon a time, you could look it up uh, Google and Facebook were trying to figure out whether you put gliders or, or balloons in the air that would um, be the bounce point for these signals over wider areas. Um, they, they've kind of abandoned those things, but the, the need for internet is clearly essential these days. It's not going to go away. Um, Hacking, I don't think that's going to go away in, in the near future. Uh, doubt it's going to go away. Um, are they going to get better at, at trying to fool you? Without question. Um, proceed with caution. And the, the, those would be my, my safe crystal ball projections. That's great. Um... We have a question here. Um, what additional book or educate myself resource uh, could you recommend beyond your stellar presentation? Thank you. Flattery will get you everywhere. Um, my stellar presentation comes from reading headlines in nine different publications on pretty much a daily basis. Uh, I will tell you that one of the great advantages of um, Amazon Prime is that for an additional $9 a month, I get the Washington Post. And there is a writer at the Washington Post. There's actually three now, but their, their, their lead writer is a guy named Jeffrey Fowler. Put simply, he writes it, I read it. But he's added two other people. Uh, one I believe is named Tara, the other is named Kelly, and, and they are excellent writers. Um, the, the issue with book, unfortunately, is that by the time it's out, um, things change. Uh, I remember from when I was in school, um, there, there was a story about going to med school where the professor would say, uh, the good news is you're going to learn a lot about medicine. The bad news is that within the next five, 10 years, could be two thirds of what I'm telling you isn't going to be valid anymore. And the only problem is I can't tell you which two thirds isn't going to be valid. So I, I'm a big advocate of following news um, and, and following multiple news sources, because I do not think that there is any single news source that can be um, the, the end all and be all to information. That's, that's, that's great. Um, there's a question here. Um, would it be possible for you to provide the URLs for the apps 
drafts, good notes, rocket book, Dr. Jeff and vocabulary that you listed on one of your- Oh, well, Dr. Slides. Jeff is, is just a story. Um, if it, it, uh, whether it's drafts, Nebo, good notes, these are all apps that you can find if you're on the Google side of life or, or the Android side of life. If you go into the Play Store and you type Nebo, it, you'll, you'll probably find it. Um, on, on the Apple side of life, you go into the App Store, you type Nebo, good notes. Uh, there, there are no URLs to these things. They're, they're all apps that are going to start on your phone or your, or your tablet. And um, once they get there, there may be a place to push them in, into a, an, another location. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. We, we do have a, a minute or two here. If, um, if anyone uh, else has a question or an issue that you're facing and for your own business, uh, we've got a couple of minutes here. So. But maybe while we're waiting, you could just uh, put that list of apps back up on the um, oh, uh, that slide back up, would. and then people um, could could see that. Also, a reminder um, that this um, this webinar was recorded, and so you can go to our website yep. fairfieldcounty.score, and um, you can watch it on demand, and and then you could stop at any of these slides and um, and, and get the uh, Get a little bit more information as well. So. Oh, by the way, Rocketbook a, as a product is, is in a, a couple of different sizes. Um, you can get the standard eight and a half by 11. They've got the um, pocket sized flip up from the top uh, spiral type thing, which I keep in my pocket now. And um, there, there's kind of a journal sized notebook as well. Um, and you can find those at Staples. And uh, I've also been able to get it delivered from Amazon. The, the whole world is available for delivery by Amazon, good or bad. Okay. All right, Let well, me move this forward for you, Bob, so you can get to our, our wrap slide. Yeah, that would be, uh, be great. It, it doesn't look like there are any more uh, questions. So we'll... Um... We'll wrap up. Um, as I say, just a reminder that it, uh, it, it was recorded and you can go to our website to get that recording. Our next live webinar will be on Tuesday, December 7th at noon. And again, the topic is how 99% of data breaches could have been prevented with Scott Gumbar presenting. And again, you can find more uh, specifics on that on our website. And if you would like to take advantage of free individual counseling, you can use the yellow bit.ly link that we talked about today on the screen, or you can um, uh, click on the request a mentor button if you're on our website. Um, I'd like to also please remind you to fill out your evaluations uh, that'll be sent immediately after this. Uh, they're very helpful to us in, uh, in the planning that we do. And so on behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank you all for attending our live webinar today. And in particular, a uh, big thank you to Bud for presenting um, an excellent range of, a range of information and uh, helpful resources to us today. And so enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. And we'll talk to you next time.